Here we are again with me taking a look at a figure that I've looked at previously, but it's a different version of the figure. Actually, this isn't the first time this has happened in R.I.D. now that I think about it. But yeah, uh, this is the Transformers Adventure version of R.I.D. 2015 Jazz. I believe this is actually the one that came in a two-pack with Drift. I think. Uh, I didn't actually get the two-pack. I got this guy separately not too long ago as of this recording. But... Uh, yeah, I previously looked at R.I.D. 2015 Warrior Class Jazz, like, a long time ago. The video was terrible. It was, I think it was actually back before I even showed transformations on screen. But, uh, I was... I don't think I was necessarily unfair of to the figure, uh, but I don't think I was very good at being, uh, critical. Like, I just kind of harped on the colors, and that was it. I didn't really talk about much else. And I've said this before, how a color scheme and, like, a paint job can make a huge difference on a figure, and this is more proof of that. But, like, yeah, I was... Like, maybe not unfair to the figure, but I think I wasn't... I, I didn't do a good job, like, really analyzing the figure. All I did was talk about the colors. So, here we've got... Transformers Adventure version, TAV23. And this is actually really cool. Like, the core figure for Robots in Disguise Warrior Jazz is not bad. It's a really interesting transformation. It's kind of like some stuff ends up in the same place as you would expect for a Jazz, but some of the way it transforms is really clever and interesting. And, uh, yeah, I, I, the original version that I looked at definitely was way too plain. There are reaper labels available that change that, but the reason I wanted to get this rather than just try and get like a cheapo uh, regular R.I.D. Warrior Jazz and then get the reaper labels is because uh, it's more specifically as it pertains to the robot mode head, which we of course will see when we get to robot mode, but it's just, I don't know. This is a really nice color layout, really nice color scheme, and it looks really really nice. Uh, a lot of it is stuff that you could get with reaper labels, but I, I don't know, I like having just the paint instead of uh, labels, but uh, first off, yeah, uh, there's a big lance on top of the car, and I really don't like that, so we'll just get that off of there. It's unfortunate that this can't store anywhere else. Like, it's just, it's not gonna fit on the underside of this vehicle mode at all. But, eh whatever. And this is, it's the same kind of weapon that the regular uh, Hasbro version comes with. It's just this weird little lance thing, and it is what it is, but it's also not all that interesting. This, though, okay, I do think the contours and shape of this car are really interesting. I like how stylized it is, even if it is ridiculous how squished down this section is. Like, I don't know how anyone's going to be able to see out of this car, but I like how stylized it is. I like how massive the front is. It makes it almost feel like a battering ram, even though it's supposed to be like more of a sports car. It's got, like I said, nice contours. You've got the exhausts on the back, which aren't painted, but that's okay. But like, you do get a lot of really nice paint on the uh, on the actual vehicle mode because this is the Takara version. I think I'm going to brighten this up just a little bit. There we go. Um, but this does look really cool. I love this blue that they used. It complements the white really well. And I like that you get some of it in the front here. And then you also get those stripes going back. And you, they take a little bit of a break here, but then they continue back here. So it does keep the line moving, kind of. It would have been nice if that blue continued, you know, through here. But, eh, whatever. It's also interesting to me that the taillights are on top of the spoiler and not down here. That's strange, but that's where they are, apparently. <laughs> and also, you get these nice lines along the doors. Uh, it's a little scratched up on one side, which I don't know if it came like that or if I did that. But it's a little bit of a shame that there's some uh, red paint missing there, but a little bit of blue paint. Okay, that's fine, but there's definitely some red paint scratched off right there, and that's a shame. But like I said, it's fine. I do appreciate, though, you've got the black paint for the windows on all the windows. That's nice. 
And then around front, also, you have the silver for the headlight sections, which looks good. As I said, the Repro labels uh, do dress it up a little bit more. Like, even this, if I were to get the Repro label set, there are some labels I would probably put on, but I wouldn't do the whole thing because the blue that they use for the stripes don't match this tone of blue. And I don't want to cover up this whole thing. But it, it's something I'm considering. And then on the underside, you've got a obvious robot there. But even though this is an obvious robot and it just kind of looks like he's wearing the vehicle mode as a shell, he does some really interesting stuff with his transformation. But in order to get to that, first we've got to do size comparisons. So let's move Jazz back here. Maybe not that far back. And bring in our usual size comparisons. And again, as a reminder, in case anyone's missed the last couple of videos where I explained this, we're using Buzzworthy Dinobot now as our Voyager stand-in because I don't have Generation Select's Artfire anymore. Artfire has gone bye-bye. But I do still have Velocitron Burnout. So you can see Jazz with Burnout. And Jazz does look bigger, but Burnout is more dense. She feels a little bit heavier, and also, obviously, the car is taller. So, there is that. I feel like there's maybe a little bit more physical mass to Burnout than to Jazz, even though Jazz appears mostly bigger. So there is all of that. Got a couple more comparisons to make. Let's compare Jazz to another Jazz, and this is another... Uh, went ahead and got the Takar version figure uh, situations, only I haven't done a video on this guy yet. Here we've got United Jazz. This is just the Reveal the Shield Jazz mold, but the Takar version. It's got a little bit more paint, uses a much brighter white than the uh, the regular plastic on the, the regular figure, but there's how they measure up. And for a R.I.D. comparison, Let's grab. There's a R.I.D. Warrior class Megatronus. No, I think they're more comparable in terms of like mass. Megatronus is definitely different because he's spread out differently, but that's how they stack up. And uh, I, I specifically grabbed Megatronus because one, he is really easy for me to reach on the shelf, and two, it's just an incredibly good figure. I've sung the praises of Megatronus before. I'm going to take this opportunity to do it again. Megatronus is awesome. And if you have the opportunity to get a version of Warrior Class Megatronus, do it, because this figure is great. Anyway, with all that said and done, we can finally move on to our last and most important size comparison. Here is TAV23 Jazz with the Duck Tank. Now, real quick before we transform this guy, uh, if you like this video, and or any of the videos, any of the other videos that I've done on the channel and you want to support me, I do have a Patreon or a coffee, links to both at the end of the video as well as down in the description. Otherwise, you could always do the typical YouTube thing of like, comment, share, subscribe. With that out of the way, let's transform R.I.D., or rather Transformers Adventure 23 Jazz, but it's the same transformation as the R.I.D. version. And again, it's really interesting. Start by pulling down these two bits in the front here, like so, and then separating this from the side, and this will kind of hinge and pull forward just a little bit, like that. Now we can unpeg the doors from the side, so that just unpegs and unpegs, and bring that out, and uh, let's darken this up a little bit again. And now we can untab the back window section from the obvious legs and then just kind of bring those down a little bit. I'm going to split the legs and rotate down feet. Now this panel comes out. There's like a little there's a little tab up here where it's a little tricky to get aligned, but basically there's this tab here that goes underneath the hood section, but while you want that to go underneath the hood section, you want this section, uh, this windshield curve to go over these bits of hinge that are sticking out here. So it just takes a little bit of paying attention to get that to line up going into car mode. Into robot mode, you just kind of pull it out. Now, 
with all of this kind of out of the way, we can bring the hood forward, kind of bring that down. And as we bring it down, we can also get these bits out of the way so that this can come down. And there are little tabs in here that'll tab in right by the collar that will peg into place. The back section, uh, first you want to get this flap back. And now there are these little tabs back here. You can kind of see right there that will tab into the back up there. So just bring this up and tab those into place. And that will keep the backpack nice and solid. And also use the opportunity to bring the legs down so that they're a little bit more straight. Okay, now this section here, you want to take the wheel well and rotate it 90 degrees and finish bringing down the front bumper and flip out the fist. And I like that's really cool. I like how the uh, front section of the car, not just the wheel wells, but specifically the bumper, ends up being the forearms. That's really cool. Now with this done, you can use this armature up in here to angle the shoulders so that they go up like that and then in like that. And that gets them both clicked into place and lined up with the rest of the torso. And again, like it's it's really cool. <laughs> this little RID warrior class figure really didn't need to go this hard, but he absolutely does, and I love him for that. And now for the last little bit, I want to rotate the head around. You don't really have to rotate the head for transformation, it's just something I like doing. Because then you don't have obvious... well, I mean, you still have the head, but like, you don't have a robot face staring back at you if you look at the underside of the vehicle. And there we have Transformers Adventure TAV 23 Jazz in robot mode. And this is, like I said before, the figure itself, the core figure, is not bad. It's an interesting design, you got some cool proportions. It works for Jazz because you have the hood chest and the door wings on the back. But the regular R.I.D. version is just so sorely lacking in painted detail, whereas the Transformers Adventure version is definitely not lacking in the uh, paint department. But I am going to try and get a light going here, because this is obnoxiously, uh, <laughs> obnoxiously not well lit in the front there. This as bright as I can make it. That's a little better. Should have been using this from the start. But yeah, this guy looks fantastic. The color separation, just the colors in general, are so much better here. Because now you've got all this extra revealed color, like the red in the shoulders, the blue in the forearms, the black and blue and gunmetal and black and... or gun... Eh, it's black and blue in the... Uh, waist section, you've got a little bit of red up in here that adds some nice kind of color breakup and separation. A little blue on the collar that blends with the blue from the hood stripes. It's all really cool. And he cleans up really nicely too. Like you've got a little bit of car hood, but because it's so flat, it actually doesn't stick out any further than the wings. So I appreciate that. And he's got a pretty nice silhouette. He's a little bulky, but like all things considered, I think that's fine. Like his shoulder, his shoulders are a bit wide. They, you know, they kind of stick out a bit. But like, given the stylization of RID, I think this actually works pretty well within that. So yeah, this is just a cool, this is a cool figure. I like him quite a bit. Uh, again, the colors are great. Silhouette is great, and he just looks really, really nice. And now, getting to the thing that I was. Uh, why I really wanted this version in particular, rather than simply TAV23 Jazz, like this being the two-pack version that came with Drift. That head is fantastic because it still gives you that stylized R.I.D. look, but he has the visor, and that visor makes such a difference to me. <laughs> 
I know I like to go on and on about how, oh, G1, I'm so sick of G1, people need to do something different, but it's like, this is different, but this still evokes G1. Like, even this, it evokes G1, but is also different. Like, it's different enough. You've got a similar shape to his G1 head, you've got the visor and all that, but it still stands out. It's very much a stylized version of that, and that's what I really appreciate about this. And it just looks really cool. I love the black helmet with the blue for the visor, and also the ears and the head crest, and the silver for the uh, little bit of mouth you can see in there. It's cool. It's like the the non-visored version. I think what bothers me the most about it is his face just wasn't super interesting to me, and also he didn't have a nose. Whereas with the visor, you don't really notice the lack of a nose. It's just it's a cool looking head sculpt, and with this color scheme, it looks great. Now, articulation is uh, also actually pretty good. The head can rotate and you get, it's on a ball joint, so you get a little bit of side to side and up and down, but it's mostly, you're mostly just going to be using that uh, ball joint for rotation. Uh, the shoulders, well, the wings can, uh, the door wings can move back and forth. I'm just going to move them back so that they're out of the way. But the shoulders can go all the way around. It's a little bit a little bit sticky, but they do go around. The arms can go in and out. Uh, these forearm pieces can collide, so if you want to go out fully, you basically need to like kind of adjust the angles a little bit so that they can get past that piece. Like if you rotate them, they're not going to go out all the way. You got to straighten them out, get them to go out. And then you can kind of rotate them once they're in position, but that's a, a slight limitation. You do have a bicep rotation. You get 90 degrees of elbow bend. The wrists can go in, but that's all they can do. But it's a you know it's a warrior class RID figure. You've got no waist articulation, which is kind of a shame because they probably could have fit in there. But then the backpack would probably get in the way of that, or the the hood backpack would get in the way of that. So I think it's fine. Uh, but then the hips can go forward that far and back. Uh, that's about as far back as they can go. I want to keep this from unpegging too much. They can also get arm out of the way. They can go out to pretty much 90. You've got a... Uh, you do have a thigh rotation, which is rather stiff, but that thigh rotation, and the knees can bend to 90, and then if you want to, you could kind of wiggle the feet a little bit. So yeah, pretty decent articulation, considering he's an R.I.D. Warrior class figure. And again, he just looks cool. He's a neat looking version of Jazz. Like, I like how Again, while I do complain about things being 2G1, I like how this is recognizable as a G1 rendition of Jazz while still being its own thing. Now you've got the weapon, this lance thing, which if you want to, you can peg into the back just for storage, and that's going on, which is eh. Now you can also peg it into his hand so it's like a rifle but because of the fin back here it doesn't like go in that far so you kind of have to angle it which looks weird if you want it to sit more comfortably or the way that i think looks best you can take this secondary part here and clip that into the hand so he's actually holding it more like a lance or sword or whatever and i think that works better it's still like not a great weapon in my mind but I think it's fine. It's okay for what, you know, for what it is. I just, I'm not super into, I'm not super into this particular weapon, but he looks good holding it. I will say that. Now, uh, in terms of size, he's an RID warrior class figure, so he's pretty much what you would expect from that size, uh, dis or that class, not really size class, but you know what I mean. So he is pretty much roughly deluxe height. We could bring in 
Burnout. You can see that he's pretty much the same height as Burnout. Let's get these out of the way so that we can put the two of them a little closer together. So, there we go. There we have Jazz with Burnout. And yeah, they're basically the same height. Burnout's actually a little taller at the head. And as I said in vehicle mode, she is a little denser than Jazz. But again, this is an RID class, or an RID figure from 2015, so makes sense. And then bringing in another Jazz, here he is with United Jazz, or Reveal the Shield Jazz, take your pick, for the same mold. And yeah, uh, this, <laughs> this Jazz is definitely bigger and more complex. You know, he's got the Automorph for the shins and all that. Um, but it's, you know, it is what it is. I think it's cool, though, how, like, these are both Jazz. They both read as Jazz. They have a lot of the same design cues, but they're also different and stylized in their own ways. Which, again, is what I like. I like that this is, like, it's not super-duper adhering to G1. It's like, you can see the G1 in it, but it's still kind of doing its own thing, which I really, really like for both of them. And for our RID comparison, we, of course, got to give it up for Megatronus, who, again, is just a fantastic, fantastic figure. So there is Jazz with Megatronus, and Megatronus is a little bit taller which I, I think kind of works. I don't know. I think it's more interesting when the bad guys are bigger. But of course, for the most important thing, here we have Jazz with the duck tank. And that does it for Transformers Adventure TAV23 Jazz. And uh, I, like I already said multiple times, like as harsh as I was on Robots in Disguise Jazz, I do think that that color or that paint scheme was very lackluster. Wasn't a fan of the head, wasn't a fan of the paint or lack thereof. But the figure itself is actually pretty solid. And with the what I think is a much improved head and the better color scheme, I mean even the non-visored head looks pretty darn good in like with the added colors, but like I'm really really feeling the visored head. But yeah, uh it really allows this figure to shine a lot better than the R.I.D. version did. Which again, like, it's a solid figure on its own, in its own right, but with the right colors and a slightly different head, it's just so much more... so much more my thing. <laughs> it speaks to me so much more like this versus what we originally had. Uh, but that's enough of that. I think I've talked enough. Though I managed to keep this video under a half hour, so yay me. Um, I've, yeah, I've said enough. So what do you all think of TAV23 Jazz, or any other version of RID Jazz that you may be aware of, or other RID or TAV figures that you know of or own? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. Thank you everybody for watching, and uh, I think I'm gonna go... I think for the next video, we're going to look at something a little bit more contemporary.